Hello everyone. Um, I have a question. <laughs> Go on. Why are we on the edge of a cliff in the freezing cold in the dark? That's a very good question. We're out here for a very good reason. We're going to be taking some astrophotography. We're here at Portlandville. You might be able to see it in the background just flashing behind us. This is a famous Dorset lighthouse and we're on the southern tip of the island Portland which has fantastic night skies. And you're going to teach me how to do some star tracks. I am indeed. Come and join us. We've walked around most of the island, I think, <gasps> at this point. I think we have, at <laughs> this point. Um, let's try here. This is where we started. We've got Portland Bell Lighthouse behind us. Perfect, beautiful scene, iconic Dorset scene. And we're not too close to the edge. No. Yep, we're a good three or four feet away from the edge. And that's one of our top tips, actually. It's a very good yeah. tip. Yeah. Don't Go. fall off the side <laughs> of the cliff. <laughs> I'm um, on the edge. You're on the edge. Of you're on the edge of something. Yeah. If you're shooting in coastal locations, then yeah, make sure you don't fall off a cliff. Visit the locations in the daytime. It's always good to know the lay of the land. Make yourself aware of the, the perils and the pitfalls that may befall you on a nighttime shoot. And bring a torch as well. Bring a torch, that's our top tip number two. Be prepared for it to not work. Like all landscape photography. Don't say that. You haven't brought me out to freeze we're, for it not to work. We're setting this up for disaster, aren't we? I think it's going to work tonight, unless a big Sign bank of cloud rolls in. Um, but yeah, be prepared. I mean, I've travelled an hour, an hour and a half in Dorset from one side of the county to the other, and it's just been a blanket of like mist and fog. I've had to travel another hour and a half back. By that time, it's four o'clock in the morning, and it actually did work, and the sky's cleared. But you've got to, you've got to have a plan B, maybe a plan C be prepared for it not to work. And without further ado, before we turn into ice cubes, I think we should shoot our first image. I think we should. I've got a DSLR with a fairly wide angle lens. Yep. Nice bright aperture, so f2.8. And you'll notice that we're also using a tripod. Yep, Which, tripod's very important. Very important thing. Another top tip. Otherwise, all your stars are gonna come out really blurry. So I'm at 30 seconds. I'm at a fairly high sensitivity, so ISO of 1600 and f2.8. Do you want to have a go at focusing? Yeah, I do. So, on this camera, on live view, you can... Can we just... I, I am a photographer as well. You're standing over a big puddle there. I am. We should have brought more sturdy boots. <laughs> I do know how to do photography, but nighttime stuff is your bag. And it is actually how we met. It is. Yeah. So, I went on an astrophotography course. Yep. yep. You I just was happened to be the teacher. Yep, yep. and we... Um, yeah. The rest is history. A lot better way to learn. <laughs> yep, and this is the first time we've done it since. So. <laughs> In six years. So, do you remember what I taught you? <laughs> okay, so I want it on the light. Yep, you want it on the light and you can, you can press, yep, you can zoom in and you can check. Always good to go manual focus. Most cameras simply can't cope with a low level of light for their autofocus systems. We're quite lucky in that we've got some lights there, so it might be able to autofocus. But if you're in a location where there is no artificial lighting, then you're really going to struggle, unless the moon is out or something. You're really going to struggle with autofocus. How are you doing? Well, I'm going to say that that looks pretty. I'd say that's, yeah, that's pretty good, actually. I mean, we're zoomed right in on the screen. We can quite clearly see that's in focus. So yeah, 30 seconds, f2.8, 1600 ISO. We can push it higher if you want to. Can I fire it off? Yeah, we, we also the final top tip is to put it on um, uh, self-timer mode. So rather than you pressing the shutter and, and there's a vibration in the camera. You press the shutter once, she's rearing to go. If you rearing to go, press the shutter once, it'll wait two seconds and then it'll take the shot. What do we do for 30 seconds? There's a star man waiting in the cope. sky. He'd like to come and see you, but he thinks it'd blow your mind. And the grand reveal. Bum, bum, bum. I'd say that is pretty good. Look how cool that is. Wunderbar. Wunderbar, okay. Wunderbar. And this is just to take a single 30 second exposure. Uh, what we're planning to do tonight is to do some star trails for you. So this is multiple exposures or one very long exposure. We wouldn't recommend that, just do multiple exposures. The only thing that's spoiling it is our lights. 
um, on the cliff there. So we'll we'll turn that off for the for the uh, for the time lapse. But I think that's a pretty good place to get started. Are you happy with that? Yeah, my houses are a little bit bright, but I guess oh, they yeah, will be. Fine. Now we've done our test shot. Should we attempt to do a star trail? Uh, yes, I think we should. Yeah, star trails, as we keep alluding to, are longer exposures. Um, they're either series of exposures, one after the other, or they're much longer, 5, 10, 20, 30 minute, hour long exposures, where you get a lot of motion in the stars. Um, What's the longest exposure you can have? Um, well, you could do all night, and, and in places where there is eternal, where there is polar night, you could probably do many days worth of exposures. Wow. Um, but you, you don't necessarily need to. I think the maximum I've ever done is, is two hours. Um, and I did that at Hardy's Monument. Two hours of 30 second stacked exposure. So we didn't leave the camera on yeah. for two hours. Um, obviously, there's a risk if you are in a popular location, you start your extremely long exposure, somebody walks in front of you with a torch, then that's ruined. So it's always worth doing series of 30 second exposures, one after the other. So that's another top tip. You also need an interval timer. So a lot of cameras nowadays have got an interval timer or also known as an intervalometer. That allows the camera to take its 30 second exposure, wait a few seconds for the shutter to reset and then take another 30 second exposure and carry on doing that for however many photographs so they want. So you don't have to keep pressing the button every 30 Absolutely. seconds. Absolutely, yeah. And if you, if you leave it too long, you will have a gap in those stars. So if you leave it for five seconds, you, you need that interval timer in order to keep those exposures going. So, without further ado, let's set our star trail going. Yeah. So we've got our initial test shot. We're quite happy with that. I might tweak one or two settings. I might go down to 15 seconds, actually. As you said, it, was, it is a little bit bright there. Yes. Um, and because we're doing multiple 15 second exposures, we're going to be loading these later on into our editing software and, and stacking them one on top of the other to build up the light of each individual point in the sky so that they join up for a smooth line. So we don't want it too bright down at the bottom. So we're looking at a 15 second exposure, f2.8, 1600 ISO. Don't use these settings as... Um, gospel. What's the word? Gospel, that's it. Yeah, that's exactly the word I was looking for. Gospel. Don't use these as gospel. So if you're in the middle of a city and you're in the middle of London and you use these settings, you might break the camera. But if you're in the middle of nowhere here, it's perfect. So we have got an interval timer on this fancy, fancy camera. And we're going to go into the menu and we're going to remember where to find it. I think it's in that menu. We say it's a fancy camera, but you can actually do these on iPhones. You don't need a fancy camera. That's true, actually. You can do star trails You can do them on iPhones. Yeah. So anyone can do these, really. So interval timer shooting. We're on a 15 second exposure and we want a shot every 16 or 17 seconds. I'm going to say 17 seconds because it gives the camera a chance to just reset the shutter and then open back up again. So. We want as many shots as we can fit on the memory card or until we get too cold. 500 shots, we are ready to go. Yay. So as soon as we press this button, we have got to wait. So generally you're looking at around 150, 200 exposures, um, but anything, anything above say 10 minutes worth of exposures, you're going to get quite a lot of movement in the stars. So let's see how we do. Let's start. Let's go make ourselves a cup of tea. See you later. So that was how long? Oh, it's been about an hour, I think. Oh. Very, very cold. Really cold. So if you are doing this, please make sure you dress up nice and warm and toasty. Or do it in the summer. Or do it in the yeah, summer, it's yeah. Probably better, better, better. Summer's better for Milky Way photography. Uh, this time of year is better for stars and star trails. That's what we're doing. But it is cold. Yes, very cold. So yes. wrap it warm, plenty of layers. Okay, so we're, we're checking our exposures in the back of the camera here. So we've got, yeah, around about 150 exposures. Just as a picture, that looks great. But we're going to turn these into nice big long star trails. So we'll show you in a bit when we get back. Uh, we're going to sleep first and then we're going to wake <laughs> yeah. up in the morning. That's another <laughs> top tip, actually. Don't edit your images as soon as you get back. Sleep and then edit them because you'll just you'll do a much better job. And then the reason behind you taking not just one long exposure is because we did actually see some people out there with we torches. Yes, yeah. um, they didn't come anywhere near us, so I don't think they're going to affect the image. No. Um, but if they did, and if they came and decided to shine their torch at our cameras, then that might potentially ruin a very long exposure. Then you would have stood for an entire hour, absolutely freezing. Wasted. Wasted for no time. No reason. Yeah. 
And then that's also a good point. Just be considerate about other photographers. Yeah. yeah, if you see other people with tripods and with torches, they're probably out taking pictures of the night sky. And if you go and interrupt them and, and shine your torch at their cameras, then it's going to ruin their shot and exactly. ruin We're their evening. Exactly. all so. after the same thing, so just be considerate to yeah, other people. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's all the top tips, really, though, isn't Weather. it? Weather. Weather. Uh, yes. It's a brilliant one, the yeah. weather. Weather. Um, yeah, I mean, clear night skies. No moon, so we had the moon setting um, as we arrived. So moon casts that light into the night sky. It means you can't see as many stars. But we've got a really cold, clear night. It's fairly windy, which isn't ideal, but it's blown all the clouds away and, and it's, just, it's just a really nice, crisp, cold, low humidity night. And there are various apps that I use to plan what a good night is going to be in terms of weather. But for now, we're going to pack up our equipment and we are going to head back to the van, the warmth of the van. <laughs> It is freezing. All right, let's go. Whoops, this is oh, mine, mine, the, mine the rocks. <laughs> Well, it's a few days later and I've loaded all the images into Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom, and I'll be using Adobe Photoshop as well. You don't necessarily need those two pieces of software. You can use any photo editing app that has layer capability and also camera raw capability. But let's see how the shots turned out. There we go. Fingers crossed. So as you can see, the, um, the shots where we have the lights on, in the foreground, you've got the rocks which are lit up. Um, so at some point during this time lapse, we turn that off, hopefully. Yes, there we go. So that's when we want our time lapse to start from that image onwards. So if I zoom in on one of the shots, obviously check the focus, looks pretty good. You can see the movement in the stars as we go along. So that is what's going to be building up our star trail. Now, if you've taken these photos for the purpose of creating a star trail, then you don't generally want to be doing much editing to each individual image first. You want to stack those images one on top of the other first. The benefit of, of doing these multiple long exposures is that you can create time lapses. So you can create video files from these of the stars moving. But for this purpose, we're just going to be loading these all into Photoshop as layers and stacking them. So we've got our first photo of the time lapse selected. So I'm going to edit that in Photoshop. And let's open up the second one. Do the same, edit in Photoshop. Now there are ways to automate this process. Um, you would load all of the images all at once and then stack them one on top of the other. Um, but for the sake, for this early stage, for the sake of showing you exactly what's going on, I've just got the two images loaded up in Photoshop in separate windows. I'm gonna take one of those images, copy it, and paste it as a new layer on top of the other one. We want to select that top layer, we want to uh, add a lighten layer mode and straight away you can see that that has built an extra part of those stars one on top of the other. What it also does is it removes some of the noise from the image. Um, so the more layers you stack one on top of the other, the more it averages out the uh, noise in the image, which is useful because we are using high sensitivities, the sensor's heating up and it's generating a lot of noise. So we've done that first, well those first, first two images, what I'm now going to do is uh, merge those two layers. So we create one single flat image. I'm going to go back into Lightroom. I'm going to ignore that error message. Uh, I'm going to go back into Lightroom and load up that third image in Photoshop. So this is quite a long and laborious process if you're not automating it. There are various stacking softwares that you can get. Uh, but again, for the sake of, sake of showing you what's happening here, I'm just using Photoshop layers, stacking them on top of the other. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it as a new layer, and I'm going to set that layer to lighten. So even after three exposures, we're seeing some star trails, which is pretty cool. I'm going to crack on and do the rest of those images, and I'll probably see you in about an hour's time. Good. Worth the cold night, oh, the cold long wait. It was worth getting so cold as we did. Yeah. It looks great. Do you want to do it again? Um, can we do it when it's a bit warmer? Yeah, probably. Yeah, thanks. 
So, I hope you have all enjoyed our little foray uh, into nighttime photography. Yeah, I've certainly enjoyed it and I've learned an awful lot. So hopefully we've inspired you to go out into the night. Yep, into the night and try it yourself. It's not that daunting, it's actually really good fun. It's really it's cold. It's a bit cold. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, then please hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. And we'll see you in a video really soon. And any questions, pop them in the comments below. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>15 second exposure, so as I'm going to go burp because we have McDonald's for dinner. <laughs> Excuse me. It's just rude. It's just rude. It's just rude. I mean, if you want to take photos of the moon, then that's great. Take some pictures of the moon. I don't like it because the no, longer the lens you've got, the better moonshot you get. If you've got a bigger telescope, you've got a better moonshot. It's not, it's not that technical. That's your little rant Yeah, that's my little moon. rant over. Because uh, that helps your... Uh, uh, <coughs> sorry, the flight. Is, Bounce, um, you'll die. And you um, want it cold. And, and you do want it cold. I don't know why I sounded excited yeah. about that, because it is freezing. <laughs> a fairly decent camera, but even your phone. <laughs> She's struggling. I'm absolutely frozen. <laughs> you have to keep moving. Top tip number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. No, seven, whatever it is. <laughs> top, the next top tip is... Um, so I'm going to just take a test shot before I start my star trail and we probably should have explained what star trails are because that's the main bit of the video. Um, go for it. And oh, then, I'll start a new recording. Yeah, then. and I'll be like, right, come on then, teach me how to actually do this. And then we can bring the tips into it.